you threw out the word radical many times. And I think it's easy for many of us to kind of um, say, yeah, that's that's great for James. It's James's personality. It's his upbringing. He's had an encounter maybe that I've not had, whatever it is. This book, it really is a call to everyone. I'm, yes. I'm reminded of our friend, our friend, Pastor Michael Wood. He preached a message years ago called One Call, That's All. Absolutely. And do you remember that yeah, message? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he talked about, we, we almost have categories and we yeah. think that one category is, well, I'm not serving Jesus. Yeah. The next category is I'm a Christian. And then the third category is I'm burning. I'm radical. And he says, the, the Bible didn't make those categories up. We made those categories yeah. up. The biblical perspective is there's two categories. I'm not following Jesus or I'm radically following <laughs> <Come> Jesus. <on. laughs> and if he's real, if he's not real, I mean, then, you know, then this is all just, you know, song and dance. Yes. You know, we, we can just go home right now. If, if he is real then he's worth everything. Absolutely. And I love your point about when Jesus chose someone to prepare the way for him, he didn't choose a lukewarm Absolutely. every day. He's looking for the most radical person Absolutely. on the block. That's what he's about. Yeah. Because comfortable people don't change history. Wow. John wasn't, even though he was radical, I guarantee you he wasn't comfortable in the desert. Yeah eating next to nothing yeah, and dressing yeah. strange. Yeah. He, so it was out of that place of discomfort, God forged yeah. the fire yeah. that the nation needed. Yeah. But he had to be out of the context of the compromise Yes. to be forged, Yeah. then sent back in to yeah. bring transformation. Brilliant. Amazing. It makes me think, John. it's not that John wasn't uncomfortable, it's that he found something that satisfied him more, more than, than the, the comfort, comfort he left behind. World. Absolutely. Because Jesus says he was a burning and a shining lamp. So in his heart, you know what was going on. He was burning. Jesus didn't say that about anyone else. Yeah. I mean, I would love Jesus to say that about me. He was a burning and a shining lamp. Two different things there. Wow. The burning was what was going on in him. The shining was the impact of wow. his ministry. So the burning was his heart. Yep. So he, you, you get a glimpse into why he lived the way he lived. He was on fire. That's why I often say, you can't tell me you're on fire and I come next to you or I come close to you and I can't tell. Wow. Because fire impacts its surroundings. Yep. If we're to set something on fire right now, it's going to get hot in this place. We're going to feel the impact of the fire. But people like say, oh, yeah, I'm on fire for God. And you use those words so lightly, but people don't feel the impact. So fire in and of itself is intense. Yes. And that's what John represented. And God was saying to me, and not just me, but all of us, he wants us to be people on fire for yes. him. Yes. And when we're on fire for him, I'm telling you, it's going to mean some radical choices. Actually, the choices may seem radical to other people, mm. but when you're on fire, it's just like, well, that's just normal. That, that's just what you have. There's no other option yeah. than to live that way. That was Jesus's message. Yes. Ultimately, John said, this is what John said about Jesus. He said, my message, I'm baptizing you in water. There's one coming who's yes. going to baptize you in, in fire. fire. <laughs> so compared to, G to, compared to Jesus, John is watered wow, down. Wow, wow, wow. So there's a fire yes. that Jesus wants to baptize Absolutely. us in. In fact, when you say that, I'm even thinking of something that Matt Wilson once said in one of our press. He said, well, John said that I meant increase and that he might decrease. He said, but what Jesus said was actually greater than that. Jesus didn't say decrease uh, so that uh, he would increase. Jesus said die. John said he was going to decrease, but Jesus said die. You're going to die. <laughs> so, so Jesus took it up another level. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. just decrease. It's like... Yeah. You're coming and you're going to be crucified yeah. on that cross and that flesh is going to die. Yeah, and the good news is this, because he didn't have increase in mind, he had resurrection in Absolute, mind. Oh, come on. And that's that's what he has in mind for you. He's not just trying to increase yeah, your yeah, vibrancy yeah. in yeah, life, yeah, your yeah, effectiveness, yeah. your power, your ability to live a kingdom life. He's trying to give you the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. And that can only happen to something that's dead. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so to reiterate your point or your question or your comment is that this is not something for James yeah. only. Yeah. And I guess that's why the Lord wanted me to write this book as well. It's that we all need to see that this is a calling on all of us. It's not for someone who is just called to lead a ministry. It's not just for some pastors and some leaders. Oh yeah, they're called to fill a stadium or they're called to gather people in uh, Africa or in some nation. Oh yeah, so they, they have to be on fire. But you know what? I'm called to be a full-time mom. I'm called to be a nurse. I'm called to be an accountant. I'm called to be a teacher. Well, I guess this is not for me. No, no, no. One call and that. Oh, yeah, Michael, what if you're watching this? Thank you for that message. <laughs>
Yes.